Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name's Noelle and I review and unbox subscription boxes here on my channel as well as some limited editions and gift boxes and the occasional little mini haul of different brands that we have our eye on. Today I have my second installment in our Once Upon a Book Club Bridgerton series. So back in 2021, they released volume number one that had the first four books in the Julia Quinn series that was made so popular by the Shonda Rhimes series which I'm very excited about season three. I know a lot of you are as well. And then they followed that up in 2022 with volume number two that had the four remaining novels. Now I have been remiss with all of my book boxes, so I'm just getting around to volume number one, but when volume number two showed up on my door and I did pre-order both of them, I decided it was probably time to finally dive in. Now in the first box, which I believe was around 165, it did include the first four novels. The fourth one was kind of a surprise because it wound up being one of the gifts and then each of the three first novels had three gifts to go along with it and I'm just assuming that one of the gifts that goes along with book number three is in fact book number four. So that was my guess based on the size of all of the packages in there. So what I did is in my first video for this one, I went ahead and read the book, of course, The Duke and I, which was also what the first season on TV was based on. And now I'm going to do book number two. Then from here on out, I'm actually going to be doing two books at a time because in the latest volume, there are again four books and each of those books only has two gifts to go with it. So that means you wound up with eight gifts in volume number two. There were nine gifts in volume number one, but one of them was a book, so kind of still eight gifts in, in my mind. Now, they do still have volume number two available, and I believe it is $195. It's in their Bridgerton collection online. You can find it there. Maybe I'll try to leave a link for that as well in the description box below. You can buy the individual books. You cannot get the gifts like the ones that I'm going to show you today from volume one, but like I said, you can get the whole volume number two, you can get the whole series of books, which is really nice because they are really truly beautiful editions. Now here, let me just show you the volume one box, which is beautiful and blue. And I swear that volume number two is like twice the size. It is huge, but just like all Once Upon a Book Club boxes, it is fashioned to look kind of like a book. So um, I don't really have a shelf that's big enough for it, but I thought that was really nice. And I've had to kind of find some space in my closet for volume number two, but like I said, the next video, the third video in this installment will be about books number three and four. Today we are going to talk about book number two which is The Viscount Who Loved Me. And of course, all of the books, because they had these editions specially made for these boxes, are so beautiful. And they all are kind of in these beautiful pastel colors. They have um, nice little facing pages. And I know that my first one was actually signed by Julia Quinn. That was kind of one of the cool perks of going ahead and getting the box. Now, when I first heard about the Bridgerton series, I had not heard about the books. I kind of thought it was going to be sort of frivolous. You know, I heard great things about it. I do like Shonda Rhimes uh, shows. So I finally gave it a chance. It is very racy. It is very saucy. It is a little bit frivolous and fun, but I really enjoyed it. And like I said, I am very much looking forward to season number three, which I believe is actually Penelope and Collins. So they're kind of have deviated from the order of the books, but I have been really enjoying reading these very quick uh, reads as well. And of course, sharing with you my terrible British accent. So bear with me. And definitely if you're interested in seeing what the gifts were to go along with book number one, go back in this little mini series that I'm going to be doing. So we're going to wind up probably with a total of, I think, four videos, five videos, five videos. So um, I hope that you will share in the joy of reading these with me. Of course, I sort of expect to see the uh, characters on the cover that we know from the TV show, but I like these uh, illustrations that they had as well. And then they did include, I believe, in most of them, I think there was some like little misprint where in some of the later books that we didn't get the second epilogues that Julia Quinn came out with, which is a little bit of a bummer, but they wound up giving us like a digital version of it, I think, instead of just printing it again. So we'll see when we get to it, but I do enjoy listening to these as audiobooks as well. 
well. I just think they're really fun. And of course, if I don't have the ability to listen to the series, the television series, but I will probably do that as eventually as well. Now, like all Once Upon a Book Club boxes, we also got a nice bookmark. This one with a nice shiny tassel, which you gotta love. We also got our quote card. This is a quote, of course, from the first novel. I burn for you, he says. Uh, so very racy. This one was definitely uh, racy as well. Had those little uh, not safe for work uh, passages. I don't have to read any of those to you. And we did get three gifts, like I said. We also got some really cute lace gloves that were kind of modern because you could use them with your electronic devices. We also got our nice little um, sort of guide to go along with it. They usually call this a kit. I won't read that whole section from Lady Whistledown for you again, but I thought it would be kind of cute to include uh, some of the question and some of the question and answer Q and A with uh, Julia Quinn that was on the inside page because one of them is sort of Valentine's themed. So I thought that would be kind of cute, even though it is uh, again referencing book number one and season number one. So. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the book and the passages though. Again, very, very beautiful. I just think these will look really nice on a shelf. I have no shelf space, but eventually this will get some of it. So we had three different gifts. The first one was on page 140. So let me go ahead and turn to that. Let's see. I hope that Julia Quinn was really happy with how these editions came out. I know that it took a little while for them to get them all printed and out to us, but of course it was great for me because I had the opportunity to catch up. So just like a regular Once Upon a Book Club box, we have a little sticky notes on certain pages that tell us to open the corresponding gift. So let me just recall this section. And of course, this is between Anthony, the eldest of the Bridgertons, and uh, the lovely Kate. So let's see. Oh, okay. So she has, uh, they've actually had their first kiss, which was not good. But at the moment, Anthony thinks he is going to marry Kate's sister, Edwina, precisely because he won't love her. And that's like, what he doesn't want because he thinks that he's going to die very young so he doesn't want to put anything beyond wifely duties upon someone he doesn't want to actually fall in love with his wife so he thinks that edwina is the one for that she's also very very beautiful but he loves the headstrong kate her sister and uh this is where they're sort of uh, all that chemistry is coming to a head. She's hidden in his office and found that he was still trying to seduce an opera singer and she kind of put an end to that. But um, let's see. Uh, it says, Oh, Miss Sheffield, he called out, his voice a rather cruel drawl. You won't get far without this. Before she had a chance to react, he reached into his pocket, pulled out the key to the study, and tossed it in her direction, deliberately aiming it at her feet. Given no warning, her reflexes were not sharp, and when she thrust out her hands to catch the key, she missed it entirely. Her hands made a hollow clapping sound as they connected, followed by the dull thud of the key hitting the carpet. She stood there for a moment, staring at the key, and he could tell the instant she realized he had not intended for her to catch it. She remained utterly still, and then she brought her eyes to his. They were blazing with hatred and something worse, disdain. Anthony felt as if he'd been punched in the gut. He fought the most ridiculous impulse to leap forward and grab the key from the carpet, to get down on one knee and hand it to her, to apologize for his conduct and beg her forgiveness. But he would do none of these things. He did not want to mend this breach. He did not want her favorable opinion. Because that elusive spark, the one so noticeably absent with her sister whom he intended to marry, crackled and burned so strongly it seemed the room ought to be as light as day, and nothing could have terrified him more. Kate remained motionless for far longer than he would have thought, obviously loath to kneel before him, even if it was to gather up the key that would provide her with the escape she so obviously desired. Anthony just forced a smile, lowering his gaze to the floor and then back up to her face. Don't you want to leave, Miss Sheffield, he said too smoothly. He watched as her chin trembled, as her throat worked a convulsive swallow, and then abruptly she crouched down and scooped up the key. You will never marry my sister, she vowed, her low, intense voice sending chills to his very bones. Never. And then, with a decisive click of the lock, she was gone. So for page 140, and I kind of started on page 139 to give you guys a little bit of 
you know, a little of a setup for the scene, we have this cute little kind of antique style key. Now we've gotten keys before in boxes and sometimes they have actually been bottle openers. I don't think that that is the case with this. I think that this is more of a decorative key. They even put a little piece of lace ribbon on it. I think it's just one of those things that you would put on your shelf. Um, very cute as like a little Valentine's uh, gift topper, right? The key to my heart or something. But it is definitely like nice cast iron. It's not the most functional gift, but you know, it was kind of cute and uh, if you have like sort of like a cottage look to your house I could see this being really cute you could also hang it on something you could even make it into a keychain for other keys or something so I thought it was cute not the most functional thing ever but you know a good interpretation the next gift came on page 279 so let's move on to 279 which was quite a bit later. And actually, I think it was kind of interesting because of course in the series, you know, it takes all eight episodes or whatever it is for them to finally get together. And they actually get together, you know, probably two thirds of the way in, in the book. And then we get to see a lot more develop. So this time the little sticky was at the bottom of the page. So sometimes they do a little bit of a smaller note, but let me see if I can remember this. So, hmm. Oh, so they, I believe, have been caught in an un, in a compromising position, not uncompromising, but compromising position. And so they are going to, they're betrothed now, like, and they're trying to feel it out, even though they both want this to happen, they don't want to admit it. And so she has gone over to, or he has gone over to see her, his now fiance, um, and she is, I think, preparing some tea. So yes, it says, before he could, open his mouth, however, even in greeting, she motioned to a silver tea service on the table in front of her and said, I took the liberty of ordering tea. There's a slight chill in the air and I thought you might like some. If you don't, I'd be happy to ring for something else. There hadn't been a chill in the air, at least not one that Anthony had detected, but he nonetheless said, that would be lovely. Thank you. Kate nodded and picked up the pot to pour. She tipped it about an inch, then righted it, frowning as she said, I don't even know how you take your tea. Anthony felt one corner of his mouth tipping up slightly. Milk. No sugar. She nodded, setting the pot down in favor of the milk. It seems a thing a wife should know. He sat down in a chair that sat at a right angle to the sofa. And now you do. She took a deep breath and then let it go. Now I do, she murmured. Anthony cleared his throat as he watched her pour. She wasn't wearing gloves, and he found he liked to watch her hands as she worked. Her fingers were long and slender, and they were incredibly graceful, which surprised him considering how many times she trod on his toes while dancing. Of course, some of those missteps had been done on purpose, but not, he suspected, as many as she would have liked him to believe. Here you are, she murmured, holding out his tea. Be careful, it's hot. I've never been one for lukewarm tea. No, he thought with a smile, she wouldn't be. Kate wasn't the sort to do anything in half measures. It was one of the things he liked best about her. My lord, she said politely, moving the tea a few inches farther in his direction. And so I was very excited to see a lovely box for page 279. Again, I started on 278 to give you all some context because this is the kind of box that we often get beautiful teacups and saucers in. And indeed, I have quite the subscription box teacup and saucer mismatched collection that is growing. So indeed, you guys, we got this beautiful teacup with all of that lovely lovely floral design on the interior forgive the reflection I just thought that was so stunning with this gold handle it's a pale blue on the exterior with these gold edges along the edge here too and then here it says Ah, gentle reader, the author is pleased to report. And of course, that is how most of Lady Whistledown's reports start. I thought that was a nice, very subtle Bridgerton um, little accent, you know, not too crazy. It doesn't say Bridgerton emblazed upon it. It is still very discreet. It's written in a lovely script. So, so pretty. Um, I'll have to enjoy it while we are watching season number three. And of course, it did come with a saucer. Now, this is one of those things. Now, I am definitely enjoying as much as I love to have matching drinkware from boxes. I do sort of love having a mismatched tea collection that I am gathering, but this would have been one of those ones where it would have been really lovely to be able to purchase another set or maybe three more of these to have a full collection or even a teapot. I just think that would be really cool um, as a subscriber or as someone who had pre-ordered this uh, particular box, this limited edition, to have that available to you. But I just thought, 
shop. This was a lovely, lovely gift. Now, I had seen some murmurings about, I think that's the gift that they were talking about over in the Once Upon a Book Club Facebook group. And indeed, that one definitely, definitely did deliver. Then we have one final gift for this particular book, and that is on page 342. But you can see there's still quite a bit more book, right? But this is when we got this one. I will not go back a whole page, but we're back at having tea and I believe they have already married at this point. I'm not sure, but um, so it says, is it still hot enough? P Kate asked politely. Anthony drained the cup. Perfect, he replied, letting out a satisfied exhale. Might I trouble you for some more? You seem to be developing quite a taste for tea, she said dryly. Anthony eyed the teapot, wondering how much was left and whether he'd be able to finish it off without being attacked by an urgent need to relieve himself. You should have some more too, he suggested. You look a bit parched. Her eyes shot up. Is that so? He nodded, then worried he might have laid it on a little too thick. Just a bit, of course, he said. Of course. Is there enough tea left for me to have another cup? he asked, as nonchalantly as he could manage. If there isn't, I'm sure I could have Cook brew another pot. Oh no, I'm sure that won't be necessary, he exclaimed, because basically he is trying to get the tea out of the way so he can have his way with Kate. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the scene that I'm talking about, because he does that a lot. So I think that's what was happening. So here we go. Page uh, 342, just a nice little sticker. This is kind of what I was hoping that they would do on some of their gift boxes so that it would be uh, easily removable. But um, let's see. All right, so we got some tea, some stash tea. We got some double bergamot Earl Grey from Stash. We got some ginger peach, one of my favorite tea flavors, and breakfast in Paris. Petit déjeuner à Paris. So we just got three tea bags from Stash, which is a great tea brand, and that is kind of nice to go along. And it makes sense because they do a lot of tea drinking in these books. It's not a very high value gift. It's not that exciting to me. I feel like they maybe could have given us some nice loose leaf tea or perhaps like an entire box of the tea just you know like three little bags of tea I feel like that's usually like a little extra that boxes will throw into a subscription box on a monthly basis but I have a feeling that it's kind of like they probably had a budget per book and uh, that budget was probably pretty much taken up by this gorgeous teacup that they did have made for the box but again I would have loved the opportunity to purchase more of these even though I do like my mismatched tea sets that I am slowly collecting I have a whole bin now of beautiful teacups that I keep on all of their little boxes because one day I'd like to have a nice cabinet where I can actually display them but I thought, you guys, that I would finish up by reading this one uh, little Q&A with Julia Quinn for you. It says, was there anything that didn't make it into the show that you really wished had? There was one thing which they managed to sneak in a bit sideways. The scene in the book, now this is book number one, when Simon plays a call, pays a call on Daphne for the first time and he brings flowers for her and for her mother and Daphne thinks, oh, I bet nobody's brought my mom flowers since, the, since my dad died. That was a really special moment that came from my own life and there aren't that many books where I do pull directly from my own life. But many years ago, when I was living in Connecticut, my husband was still a medical student. I don't even know if we were married at that point. I happened to be in Colorado with family on Valentine's Day. This was before the internet where it's really easy to order flowers online. So he called my sister to get the number of a florist near us. She thought it was so sweet and helped him out. So on Valentine's Day, he sent me flowers, but he also sent flowers to her, my mother, and to my grandmother. My bouquet was the biggest, of course, and and everyone thought it was so sweet, but the reaction from my grandmother, my grandfather had passed away a few years earlier and had been somewhat diminished for years already. She was just like a little girl, totally lit up when she got those flowers. So I did let Chris, her husband, know that that was a really special moment, or Chris Van Dusen, it says, and they managed to work in a line, so he must have been one of the producers, excuse me, not her husband. So I did let Chris know that that was a really special moment and they managed to work in a line where Daphne says that Simon brought flowers for the both of them. I guess that's the moment I would have like to see Violet actually receiving the flowers. So I just thought that was really, really sweet and appropriate for Valentine's Day, which is coming up. Uh, this is a very romantic uh, stories that she has produced for us. Sexy and romantic, which, you know, it can be both. And of course, I thought it was very nice because if you watched my first video, you know that Once Upon a Book Club did sort of highlight that moment in the book, which was very, very sweet with one of the gifts that went along with the first book. So I thought this was a really fun 
fun book. I am very interested to read the next couple of books where I haven't seen the matching series, so I don't have like different characters sort of in my mind. I'm interested to see how I imagine them, although a lot of the characters have appeared in the first couple of uh, series of the shows. So should be interesting because I don't really know what's going to happen and I won't have that comparison to make. Um, I think the key is nice. I think the tea was a little bit of a lesser valued item but kind of expected. But the teacup, they definitely win my affection with the teacup because it is so so pretty and very appropriate for a Bridgerton collection box. You guys let me know in the comments below what you thought about it. Are you excited for season number three? Have you read all the books? Do you think these editions are as gorgeous as I do? And I will see you all very very soon in my next unboxing.